We'll probably look back at the example we did last time just to review a bit. And then I don't know, we, we might have some fun doing all kinds of things with JavaScript just to illustrate the potential of it and to illustrate um, the, the sort of thing that it does. Um, so today we will do that. Um, Monday of next week um, will probably be more JavaScript examples, some loose ends perhaps. And then the Wednesday, uh, I want to make a work day for your final project. All right. Uh, I will be posting an announcement soon as far as end of the semester details. You know, so I would expect to have that. You know, certainly by the beginning of, of next week. All right. Let's 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 review briefly the whole notion of JavaScript. Um, the whole idea of JavaScript is that. <laughs> We have our client browsing the internet, accessing pages on a web server. Well, I shouldn't say accessing, I should say requesting pages on the web server because when the client, uh, uh, when you type in a URL or you click a link, you're sending a request to the, to the web server. You're not actually like pull, you know, you're not actually accessing their data, you're asking them for that page and they send you a copy of that page. So that makes it back to, to your side, the client side. And it's going to be a mix of HTML, which is, again is the content of the page, CSS, which is the appearance, and JavaScript. And the purpose of JavaScript is to provide some kind of interactivity on the page. Again, interactivity. Yeah, for the most part, that's the purpose of, uh, of JavaScript, to provide some interactivity. Uh, uh, on the page. So we can do things like when you put your mouse over something, uh, a different menu can pop up. Or when you click on something, the picture can change. All right? You do something, or by you I mean the user, someone on the client does something, and the page responds to it. And, and here's the important part of it, it does it without having to go back through the server and getting back a new page. All right? It does it because in addition to you know, the HTML and CSS, that JavaScript is there which performs that functionality, which actually causes the image to change or the menu to appear or whatever. So all the HTML, including stuff that you might not necessarily see, is sent with the client, along, uh, sent with the HTML, along with JavaScript that sort of controls that interactivity. We had mentioned sort of the three things going on in JavaScript. Events. We define JavaScript as, as providing interactivity and, you know, interactivity means the user does something, the page responds. User does something, page responds. So, therefore, we have to have code that sort of captures the user's actions. Now not everything the user does is going to be important from a JavaScript perspective. For example, if they move their mouse over um, a paragraph of text, so what? That doesn't mean anything. But certain actions we are going to be using to trigger this interactiv uh, interactivity and those are important. In the example we gave last time, we clicked on buttons and made images appear. So that was the event that we were interested in. When the user clicks on a button, this happens. We then have the DOM, which works very closely with the JavaScript language itself. The DOM is a way of, to point to elements on the page and their properties or their characteristics. JavaScript is the language that we use to access and manipulate those properties. When I say properties, I mean anything that you can set via the HTML or CSS. An example, the font. We could write JavaScript that, we that, we would, that would cause the font of the page to change when we click the button. All right. 
whether an image is visible or not. Whether an image shows this file, you know, image1.jpg, or a different file. So any of the things that we can set initially when we write our HTML and CSS, whether they be HTML or CSS, we can change via JavaScript. And if you think about that, <laughs> essentially we can change everything about the page then, is what, what it boils down to. All right. Let's look at the example we did last time and see how it fits into the framework of this. So, I can go here. Where was it? And I had this page that allowed me to show different pictures, hide the image, show the image. All right, so show picture one, show picture two, show picture three, show picture four, hide the image, show it again. All right, all that's interactivity. Now, let's again view it from the perspective that I talked about a second ago, user event. The user events in this example are what? They're me clicking on the different buttons. So when I click on this, something happens. When I click on this, something happens and so on. In a minute we'll look at the DOM and the JavaScript language itself. Let's go and look at the code for this page. All right. Here's our event on click. That event is on the button because that's what I'm clicking. Sometimes students are tempted to put the event on the image because that's what's changing. That isn't the case. It's not what's changing that you put the event on. It's what uh, instigates the change. What you, you, what you do to sort of set the change in motion. And in this case, it's clicking the button. So on click, all the events start with the word on. We looked at a list last time and we'll probably go over a couple examples today. All right. But a basic one is on click. When the user clicks on this, make something happen. And what are we making happening? What are, what are we making happen? We're actually making a couple things happen. First of all, the first thing that we have happen is we're changing the source property of the image, right? The source property is, is something I said initially, right? I went in and I created that picture so that when the page loads, I get that image, image one. So I set that in the HTML, all right? But I can change it. So when the user clicks on button two, I use the DOM to point to that image on my page, that image object, that image tag, and say I want to change the .src attribute. So again, let's analyze this one step at a time. Document means I'm looking at something on this web page as opposed to someplace else because you could actually write code to look at a different web page. But I'm right, uh, th this particular thing, I want to change something on this page. So that's what document means. Get element by ID means find the thing on the page that has this ID. What ID? Well, the ID that's in parentheses, image pick. So what on this page has an ID of image pick? That image does. So what we're doing effectively is we're pointing at that image now by saying document get element by ID. You know, effectively that says point at that image. This is another reason, by the way, why it's important to make the IDs unique, right? Because you don't want any ambiguity what you're pointing at when you're using this JavaScript. You want to say, this is the image I want to change, not this one or maybe this one. All right? you, want to, you want to change one specific image. What about that image that we want to change? We want to change the source property, SRC, which is the very same source property that we set originally in the HTML. So it's not a coincidence that that's .src. You know, that's a property of that tag. So we can change that, uh, pro that property through our JavaScript. And what are we changing it to? We're going to change it, 
Well, in the case of the first one, we're going to change it to 1.jpg. In the case of the second one, to 2.jpg, 3.jpg, and 4.jpg. I went in and, and also changed the alt attribute in a similar way. I separate the commands by semicolon, and then I have, instead of changing the source attribute, say, change the alt attribute. So the effect of this is as I click around the page, I show different images. Now, the other thing I'm doing is, through these other buttons, the hide and show image, I can change aspects of the style. All right? Aspects of the style. So in this example, I'm changing aspects of the HTML, right? I'm changing the source attribute of the HTML. In this case, I'm changing an attribute of the style. Same way, point at that image, say I want to change the style of that, and then say I want to change the visibility to hidden if they click the first one, to visible if they click the second one. Now I could have set those initially in, in the CSS. I didn't, so they defaulted to visible. And, but then I can go and change that from the defaults. Couple things to notice. First of all, notice that there are double quotes around the whole instruction. Inside, we use single quotes. All right. If we were to use double quotes here, that would confuse the browser and have it think that that, that statement ended there. If we did a double quote here, that wouldn't work. All right. Um, what gets put in quotes when we're using the exact name of something? In other words, image pick is the exact ID that we want to have. It's not a variable, which you know we might hit on variables a little bit later, but we want that exact name. We want this exact name of the image. So therefore, we don't put those, or we do put those in quotes, rather. Question about this example. All right, here's a question. I want to make a button that will allow me to change the font of this. Okay? Dramatic sound effect inserted. All right. I want to make a button to change the font on this page. So, first part, part, part is easy input type equals button. A button, again, just a plain old button, is used to invoke JavaScript. Other than that, it really has no purpose. It's not like a submit button where you send data to a form or a clear button where it clears out the form. It just is purpose is there to change the What do you suppose we're going to put here? We want to change the font on the whole page. No? On this page, so it's document. How about the body of the page? We're going to change the style. We're going to change the font family. And we'll change that to Arial. Let's see if this works. Ooh. You know what? It's funny. As I started typing that, I started to have some doubts if I was typing the right thing. It's one of those things that, you know, 
you, you know, they say trust yourself, you know, like if you're taking a test. As I started, I started to have second thoughts. It's like, is this the right code? I, I think I'm missing something. It's one of those nagging things, like I think I left the coffee pot on, or I think I left the stove on, you know. But we went ahead and did that. Now let's interpret this. Document means on this web page. Body means I want to change it for the body of this web page. What do I want to change about it? I want to change the style of it. What about the style? I want to change the font family and I want to set it to Arial. Now, if we had a style rule here, for the body, it would look like this. I, I deliberately picked font family because the style rule has a dash in it. Let's give it a style of Garamond. All right, there it is at Garamond. There we change it to whatever I changed it to, Ariel. Notice it says body, font, dash family Garamond. Here I said document dot body, so that part matches up on this web page, the body. Change the style, all right, that matches up, right? But I say font capital family. That's one thing. When you're putting in, in JavaScript, the CSS attribute, if the CSS attribute contains a dash, like this contains a dash, you don't put the dash in JavaScript. Instead, you eliminate the dash and capitalize the first letter of the word. So in other words, Font dash family becomes font no dash capital F family. Other than that, whatever the attribute is in HTML, um, whatever the attribute is in HTML, um, you simply use that to change it. How could, for example, we make a picture bigger? Well, we could change the height attribute of it, right? Let's start out with a small height, height of 100 tiny image. See if this works. We can make the picture bigger. And correspondingly, we could make it smaller. All right? So, how do I know how to do that? Well, I know that the HTML attribute is height. Oops. The HTML attribute is height. So, if I can point to that image, I then change the height attribute to something else. If I, um, if I uh, want to change an HTML attribute, I simply say get element by ID dot name of the HTML attribute. If it's a style attribute I'm changing, I say document get element by ID style then the CSS attribute. So. How can we write a 
How could we make a button to make this page red? What do you think we would do here? But make the entire page red. And I don't mean you'd make the page red by reading it. That's not what I mean. I mean the actual color red. Well, we have our button, right? And we have our event on the button that says, when I click this, do something. All right? We want to make it red. All right? Now, to answer the question how to do this, you'd have to think about how to make it red if you were just coding regular CSS. If I was making red, if I want to make this page red using regular CSS, what would I do? Repeat, please. Right. I would go up here and say body. Um, <laughs> yeah, what would I say? Background color yellow. All right. So that's how I would do it if I was just coding it in CSS. Well, the DOM allows us to change that property. So it's on the page. So I will say document. What about the page do I want to change? I want to change its body. What about the body do I want to change? I want to change something about its style. And what about the style do I want to change? I want to change its background color. Now again, background dash color would become background capital C for color. And that equals red. So when we load the page, it's yellow because we set that rule. When we click this, it makes it red. Now, <clears throat> the important thing to, to, to realize here is that this is the same attribute as this. I'm just setting it two different ways. One way I'm setting it via the normal way that we've been doing it the whole semester through our HTML and CSS. Or I can set it via my JavaScript by using the DOM to point to that element and then saying what I want to do to that element. All right. That in a nutshell is what JavaScript is all about. Now, Believe me, it gets more complicated from that because you can do all sorts of crazy things with it. All right? But in a nutshell, that's sort of at the, at the basis of it. We're making our pages interactive. We're capturing events that people do on click or whatever. And then we're pointing the things on the page and then doing something to them, taking and using their different properties. All right? So. You know, we can, you know, we can, we can do some crazy things like we could make it impossible to click on a button. All right. I think we can. Let's try that. That's always a fun one. Generally, you're better off doing an external CSS, though, so if you're doing more than one page, right? Yeah. In that case, the only difference is this code would be in the external CSS. Yeah. You don't want to be yeah. With yeah. As as, as I s repeat that last part. You don't want to be really trying to do that through JavaScript because the JavaScript only affects an individual page. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not going to say that as a blanket rule. You right. you you put in the JavaScript that's needed on on the page. Now there is a way you can you can create an external JavaScript file if you have some common code. That's going to be between pages. But remember, the, the, you know, it's not like I'm going to do this via CSS or I'm going to do it via JavaScript. It's the mix of the two that really it gives you the interactivity. Okay. The style sheet relates to the initial load. The, um, the um, what do I want to say? The uh, JavaScript relates to interactivity and what we want to do with that. But you can change the page color through JavaScript just as easily as you do it through CSS. 
Yeah, but, but, but you're, you're missing the point. Yeah, we, if I want to set the color and I never want to touch it, there's yeah. no reason to do it in JavaScript. Right. The reason that you would do it in JavaScript is if you wanted the page to change based on some user action. All right. So if the user clicks on this, I change the color of the page. Then I would want to do it via JavaScript. What I did is effectively I changed the position of it as you put your mouse over it. All right, that's always a lot of fun to do. Now, yeah, because I say it's a good way to harass your users, and that's always an important aspect of a website. Now, the, the problem is, is now I can go click it. Or can I? I could do this. I'm putting a different event for on mouse out so that when we take our mouse off of it, it will move to a different place still. So. Go and try to click it. It's kind of bouncing between those two positions as quick as anything. All right. You could have a lot more fun with this. You could generate a random number and put it on that position. You could do all sorts of things. All right. Now again, there's really no purpose of this other than to illustrate that we can really pretty much literally change anything. How did we do it? Well, I gave this button an ID of try. All right. I said document get element by ID. I want to change and set the position of this to absolute with a top of zero. All right. These are all attributes that I could have put in my style sheet for that. I could have said pound try position, at, uh, position absolute uh, top zero px. I could have put that in there. But I'm putting it in based on when the user takes the action of putting their mouse over it. So now we're using a different event on mouse over as opposed to on click. All right. Then we do the opposite and move it to a different place when the user takes their mouse off of it. Which actually, since the button moves, it automatically takes <laughs> the mouse off of it. Yes? Why did you use pixels or the on the rest of the Um, I probably could have on height. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I, I just, I think I just omitted it. Yeah, let's see. Oh, actually that's why. The HTML attribute height assumes pixels, so you don't have to put the PX on there. 
All right. Whereas the style sheet one, you need the PX to say, so it knows it's pixels instead of percent. So, terribly useful? Not really. At least this. This part of it isn't. But it's useful in illustrating how this whole scheme works. Event, point to an element, access and change its attributes. All right? Um, I think everyone, well, let me rephrase that. Every software developer of a certain personality type does at least one button that you can't click on <laughs> just for the fun of it, just because it's really fun to kind of do that and, you know, here, can you test this out for me? Ha, 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 you can't click on the button, you know, that, you know. Not to say I would ever do anything like that. Of course not. That's childish. All right, let's look at another example. And this example will be similar to what you're going to be doing for your um, JavaScript uh, example. All right. This is old. I need to update it because two of these three cats are no longer with us, unfortunately. Uh, but we're going to do, as we know, the internet is the world's lar largest uh, depository of cat pictures. All right. So in keeping with that tradition, I have this. This is my former evil cat, Cleo. That's Simba, which is my, always will be my favorite cat. And this is Jackson, who was just a kitty in this picture, but is, is, a, is, a, is getting up there now, is, is a full-grown cat. So, let's see what I did here. Notice how, notice what changes. So I put my mouse over these things. I'm getting some interactivity, right? What am I getting? I'm getting that headline to change. I'm getting the image to change. And I'm getting the text below it to change. All right. Let's take a look and see how, um, how we do it in this case. First of all, notice what I have. I have my HTML. Again, do keep in mind, as I've said a number of times in the past, for many of these examples, I keep uh, the style sheet inside simply so I don't have to switch between files when I'm demonstrating. That should not be taken as an endorsement of having embedded style sheets. It should be, an, it should be external style sheets in everything you do. Uh, again, you know. Oh, uh, someone press their camera. Yeah, there you go. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, so anyhow, I just put this in here. And what I do is I have a basic div with my thumbnails. I then have a div that I call bigger, that has a bigger picture, a uh, bigger picture in it. And initially, I set it to the first picture I want to display, which is the picture of Cleo. So that's why when we open this page, that's the page, or that's the image and the text that loads. Okay. Now, as far as making thumbnails, here's a couple of tips uh, um, that, that, that I think are good. And I, I can't recall if I've mentioned these or not. First of all, you know, a thumbnail is a smaller version of the image. And then what you do is you allow, you, typically you allow the user to interact with it, like either click on it or put the mouse over it, and then you show the bigger image. Notice that these images are oriented differently. In other words, Cleo and Simba are portrait, that is they're taller than they are wide, whereas Jackson's landscape, which is wider than it is tall, which actually with Jackson that's accurate both in terms of the photo and the actual cat being wider than he is tall. But at any rate, um, notice the thumbnails though are all of the same proportion. All the thumbnails are square. All right. 
It's important to realize that you don't have to make a thumbnail simply a smaller version of the picture. A thumbnail should simply be a smaller image that expresses something about the bigger image. So notice for here, for example, I don't show all of Cleo, all of the picture, the couch isn't shown, just the top half of Cleo's head is shown. With Simba, I don't show his whole, uh, I don't show his paws, and I don't show the chair and the deck. And with Jackson, I just show his head and not the body. It's okay to do that. You know, use some image editor to go and crop out to get a consistent size for those images and a consistent ratio between the height and width. It is important when you edit images not to mess up the height and width, the, the ratio between the height and width. Because if you do that, you'll end up distorting the image and you'll, make, you'll either make things look stretched out horizontally or stretched out vertically. And th that to me, that drives me crazy when I see that on websites. Um, that's, that's like a, a stamp of amateurishness in my mind when I see the, the aspect ratio of those. It's just like I, I have a hard time recovering from that. <laughs> right? uh, so therefore it's important to keep those, uh, keep the ratio between them the same. Now in this case again I cropped them to make all the thumbnails um, a consistent size. Now I know this isn't a class in photo editing and again I've suggested that you use a simple tool like paint uh, or on the Mac, what's it called, iPhoto or whatever. Um, you don't have to be an expert in photo manipulation to be a web developer, but you should know some very basics, like how to resize a photo, how to crop a photo, maybe a little bit about fixing a photo. Um, we do have a multimedia class offered in the spring that, that addresses uh, that and, and a bunch of issues in multimedia. That's, that's a pretty good uh, class to take. But uh, again, regardless of that, you know, a lot of people have at least some experience with this just based on, you know, the, the personal pictures that they take. All right. So that's my word on thumbnails. It's good to make the thumbnails a consistent size because that looks neat. If this was, if these were uh, vertical and Jackson was sticking out like that, it wouldn't be lined up and it wouldn't look near as good. All right. At any rate, let's look at the code. The code here, I have... On mouse over, that's what instigates the action, right? When I put my mouse over this thumbnail image, again, that's what the user is interacting with, where you put the event. So don't get confused and think I'm going to put the event on this, because I'm not interacting with that. That's what's changing. What I'm interacting with, though, are these thumbnails here. So, so I put my mouse over those. <laughs> Following the recipe, right? Use the DOM to point to the different elements I want to change. The first one I want to change is I want to change that picture. All right? So I say document get element by ID big pick dot SRC equals and then Clio dot JPEG. Well, that image is the thing on the page that has the ID of big pick. I set the SRC of it to Clio. All right. I probably should also set the alt attribute, but I, I didn't in this example. All right. I then have a semicolon between my JavaScript statements. And I have document get element by ID cat name inner HTML. This is a new one. All right. This part is the same as before. Find a thing on the page that has an ID of cat name. And that is this H1. Now I say set the inner HTML. What's the inner HTML? Well, you can probably guess it. It's the text between the start and end tag. So I'm saying change that text between the start and end tag to... Cleo, when I put my mouse over the image of Cleo. Finally, get element by ID cat description, cat desk, set the inner HTML to Cleo is evil. And that is this description down here. By the way, in the, in the interest of fairness, um, it has 
often been claimed that Clio was not evil per se, simply misunderstood. So uh, if we had more time in the semester, I'd bring other family members in and we could have a, a debate pro and con and let you, the jury, decide. But unfortunately, we're winding down the semester. All right. At any rate, really the difference between this one and the other one is the use of the inner HTML. With that inner HTML, we can put anything we want to All right. In fact, what if I wanted to make the word Clio bold in this one? I could do this. I could actually put not just the text of Clio is evil. I could put strong. And it's going to write, it's going to put in that inner HTML the HTML tag for strong the word Clio, the end HTML, and then the words is evil. So now if I do that, notice that Clio, that might be a little hard to see, but Clio is actually bold. All right? Um, um, that could be done a number of different ways. The question is, is how does the MSN works? How does the MSN uh, navigation work? The MSN navigation being oh, who who won the dancing contest? Does anyone know? Um, Okay, not Rob Kardashian, okay. Well, good. That's who I was rooting for, is not Rob Kardashian. I was actually rooting for the guy. What's his name, JR? I, I only watched like one episode of it, but I always get updates from my sister, so. So it's as good as watching it, all right? All right, this is the functionality we're speaking of, where when you put the mouse over, that changes. Now the question was, is how is that done? That could actually be done several different ways. We could be writing the inner HTML of that to write the new thing, or we could be doing something like this. We could have a div that's our main menu that has a bunch of links in it. Entertainment, sports, weather. I'm not going to write out the tags, but those would be links. And they would have an on mouse over. All right? And probably an on mouse out. Then you could have a div with an ID of entertainment with all the entertainment links in it. A div with an ID of sports, with all the sports links in it, and so on down the line. Then we could have code when the user puts their mouse on entertainment, this div becomes visible, the rest of them become invisible. And through CSS, we could position them so they're all right on top of each other. So it looks like there's just one div, but really we're swapping between several divs. So, there's, uh, again, you know. That's, that's the way I thought based on that last one. Yeah. That, I saw this, I well, uh, again, you know, I, I probably, uh, probably shouldn't use this expression given my own gallery example, but there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? You, can, uh, you, you could write the internet HTML to it. You could do it that way, or it could be showing and hiding uh, that. All right? Even in this example, even in this example, another way I could do this, whoops, another way I could do this, in fact, maybe we'll do this on Monday, um, another, a different way I could do this is I could make three divs, one for Clio, one for um, Jackson, and one for Simba. 
And then as I put my mouse over um, the appropriate thumbnail, I could hide all of them and show the one I want to show. So even this one I could do a different way and, and it would be you know, just about, you know, just about the same functionality. We could sit and split hairs and say which one is better than the other one, but effectively they're both pretty good solutions. So, I'll actually make a note of that. That will be something that, that we can talk about on Monday as sort of an alternate way of, of doing this. And, uh, uh, you know, so, so we'll talk about that on, on Monday. Questions? Yes? Assuming uh, you put your style rules in mm -hmm. CS, Mm -hmm. Where would you put the JavaScript? Would that go in the CSS? No, the JavaScript would not go in the CSS. The JavaScript, again, if it was JavaScript specific to the page, you would just, in, you would just put it in like I'm doing here. All right? If it was JavaScript that we might want to share between pages, you could make an external JavaScript file similar to, to making an external CSS file. So it depends on the kind of, of JavaScript. Um, CSS typically is shared between pages, and there might be an exception here or there where it's distinct on one page. JavaScript is more of a split. There's certain pieces of JavaScript that go with a page, and there's certain pieces of JavaScript that are to be shared between pages. So it's more even in the case of JavaScript, you, you have not all your JavaScript you want to share, but some of it you do. Whereas with your CSS, yeah, most of the time you probably want to share it. So most of the time you'd put it in an external CSS file. Other questions? All right, I will upload this example. I will make the note of what to talk about on Monday, and then we'll see you up in lab.